This is Corolla Digital. Hey guys, it's Skip. And Allison Bedell. We're really happy to be part of Corolla Digital and to bring you our first podcast. The first bunch of episodes were recorded earlier in the year as we thought we'd be launching them back then. So you may hear some things talked about that seem untimely with what's going on right now. Also, in the first dozen episodes, we recorded some segments where we talk about other things that we thought fans would love to hear, but it made the podcast way too long. So you may notice that on occasion, something seems like it's missing, and that's because we cut some of it out of the podcast. But in the meanwhile, we'll be taking listener questions from Facebook and Twitter and add things as we figure out what works and what you want to hear. Until then, sit back and enjoy Hammer Hammer and Nails. Nails. Welcome to Hammer and Nails. With Skip and Allison Fidel. Hey, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for listening to us again. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. We're back at it again. We appreciate you guys turning us on. <laughs> turning well, us on again. <laughs> Was I a part of that? <laughs> I don't know. It's just what it came to my mind. So, yeah. We're recording again from uh, California, where we are with our laptop and our big giant superstar microphone. <laughs> right? We're doing our thing on the road. Yeah, we're not uh, not on back the in the not back in our regular studio. So we're going to do the uh, on the fly version. Right. So, a lot of good stuff going on though. A lot right? of good stuff. We're uh, constantly busy. We're always on the go, which gives us a lot to talk about. Um, starting with what we've been up to. Well, of course, we're always traveling, you know, constantly for uh, the filming of Catch a Contractor, and that's pretty much taken us all over the place. Uh, we're doing a bunch of stuff in California and other areas which we can't really uh, top secret, top secret. talk about too much because yeah. we got to keep it a secret. But we got a lot of other good stuff going on as yeah. well. Um, of course, always being on the road, we get to go to some really cool events and, yeah. you know, some red carpets and premieres and uh, and Bellator, right? Yeah. Spike is yeah. awesome uh, with Bellator MMA. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge MMA guy. I've been wrestling pretty much my whole life. I love the jiu-jitsu. I love the MMA. And I love going to the fights. Yeah. And, um, we had a really cool opportunity last year. Uh, we've actually, we've gone twice so far. Uh, last one was at Mohegan Sun. And that was an amazing night. We talked about that a few pods ago. Oh, no, we, we went to the one in Atlantic City also. No, what did I say? Yeah. The Mohegan Mo- Sun. Mohegan Sun. Was, that was the most recent one that we just went to before this last one. Yeah, we went yeah. to, but the first one was in Atlantic City. The second one was Mohegan Sun, and right. we talked about meeting Tito and Amber. And, yeah, um, in Connecticut over at Mohegan. Yeah. Right? So what was really cool is that this past one, uh, Bellator 136, was here in California at, was it called Irvine? Yeah, it was, was the Irvine the, Convention Irvine. Center. Yeah. It's a college, and they have a convention center there, and because it's so close to where Tito lives, he was there as well. Yeah, uh, so we got to go to that. It was great to see him and Amber again, yeah. and of course everybody from Bellator, all the Bellator guys, um, everybody from Spike, all our friends over yeah. there, the PR, yeah, like those guys, PR cats, yeah, the right? Spike guys, like a whole bunch of Spike people that we made friends with, they're there too. But what I wanted to also talk about was before even the fight, before the fight, <laughs> getting to the fight. Yeah, um, that was like a little bit of torture. Because we get to this college campus and... Oh, the parking was like ridiculous, I know. right? You could, I know. Yeah. So we get there. And <laughs> Couldn't like, find anywhere to put the car. It was like... The, the arena, world. right? We get to the like the arena and there's like this big parking lot where they got those big trucks that say Bellator on them, right? So we, we pull along to that one. Now, meanwhile, we're supposed to be in there. They tell us in this email, be in your seat at 5.30 because as soon as that TV starts rolling, right. they want us in well, their let's, seat. Let's fill people in a little bit. So when we go to these things, because we're stars on a Spike show, you know, we get VIP all access passes and they want us up in the front row. So, you know, obviously we're getting the camera footage and some publicity, you know, it's, you know they want to they right. show their talent from other shows being there at the fight. Right. It kind of serves a purpose in a lot of different ways. Um, so we're a little spoiled because when we go to these things, you know, we get to walk up and, you know, and we check in, we get our uh, neck uh, yeah, lanyards, like right? Yeah, the, lanyard. uh, the, uh, the, the plaque, the wear yeah. around your neck, the VIP <laughs> like thing. Yeah, thing. And, that, like, and that thing pretty much, you know, you walk up to security, they don't even look at you, just yeah, fly right eat, through. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's pretty much a really cool ride from that point forward because you're going up to all the roped off areas, you're sitting up in the front row. Pretty much everybody up in that area that's VIP are all, you know, movie or entertainment people yeah, or sports, sports stars or fighters yeah. or they're all celebrities. 
So it's cool. We've gotten to meet a lot yeah. of really cool people up there. In the past, when we have gone to get those tickets, they tell us to go to the VIP will call window, and you give. Then there's starting at a certain time. That's when they're going to have our tickets, and we right. and that and you go there, and then you have to be you in your pick seat. Up your credentials. Correct. You have right. to show your ID. It's a Manila envelope yeah. that comes with the. Uh, with the, the like, and the, then you open the envelope, the and this golden light comes out. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> it's like, ah! And then we lift out these things, and it's like, God. Yeah, and then this is mile-long line yeah. at the box office of people buying right. tickets, and we go in and we pick up our passes. And so it, it's yeah. really cool. We get the celebrity treatment, and even from the point when we pull up at the hotel or arena, whatever, right. there's always some sort of special parking area for right. people that are VIP. So, all right. Sorry. Conti- so we get, okay. Continue your okay. parking story. All right. Now, yeah, really? being that we know that we're used to all that. Yeah. Right. So we've, you know, it's not like, oh, we're, you know, long-time celebrities, and we've got this, you know, we have these ex expectations but historically when we've gone to these particular fights there's been a certain what's the word i'm looking for like a routine or a certain way that they run things so well, yeah there's a structure yeah. to the night from the time right. that we park our car right through going to our seats right. you know it's like you talk to certain people and you so know, we get there all and the backstage stuff there's there's no special parking lot well i see what i think is a special parking lot and it's got um the trucks there from bellator a whole bunch of things so i said to the it's person got all the limousines from what? yeah 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 right. so there's a person sitting at the entrance to that parking lot and meanwhile we pull right up to that which it happens to be the first place that we got to after I made four wrong turns and we ultimately oh ended up there. So I said to the person, well, we're from Spike. We need to be, you know, like, in, where, where do we go? Where do we park? You know, we're from, we're from Spike. I thought, I don't know, police work, we call that a clue. But, you know, I thought that person would understand that, you know, like we're with the people putting on the show. Right. But uh, they said, no, you have to, you park, uh, you know, like, they go out of here and make a left, make a right, go fuck yourself and then go, you know, whatever. So we leave that parking lot and then we go up to this other parking Slipped lot. fucking there, didn't you? I know, but but it was only one. So then we went to the t- this other parking lot, and there's like a few attendants in there. Now we see people parking, and we're like, okay, we're from Spike, you know, we got to get in there right away because the, you know the show's gonna start. That we got to be in our seats, you know. Oh, do you know? Do you have? Did you reserve the, in this lot? No. Well, it's gonna be ten dollars. I'm like. What Fuck a, that. I, I don't care, I don't <laughs> care about the money. I know, I just we're that, we're like, so late. Right? I know. But let's remember, people, we're in California. You can't get anywhere on time in California. There's traffic everywhere. everywhere. So now we pull into this campus where the convention center is. It's a college it's campus. It's just a parking lot before you even get into the parking lot. And it's lot. like. It's this long line of disaster. cars, disaster. right? Long, lots of so, cars. Let's remind you of that email we got. We got to be in our seats yeah, by a certain be time seat. because they don't want any empty seats when they start when they start rolling the show. When you yeah. guys watch the fights live in Bellator or any live broadcast, they want every seat in the auditorium filled at the camera show because they don't want it to look like there's a, you know a half a crowd or whatever, right? Right. So it's important that we're there on time. We're so late and we're trying to get there. We're so late and so I. I said, you know what? Where are we supposed to park? I said, well, we're Spike. You know, where is there special parking? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, you go down the hill, make a right. You know, you go to the go up to there's like a parking lot and a special area where you're gonna get the blah 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 thing. Like, like like as if there's a special area that this person knew about. Right. So we leave that parking no lot, we make area. a right, we drove about a half a fucking mile, yeah. right, until we get to this like huge like parking garage, right, like multi level, yeah. and I'm like. Oh, I'm not going in that fucking garage. Like, I, come on. Like, now we're like, even if we parked there, the walk to get to the arena would have been 20 minutes. Yeah, we're like, we're like city blocks away from where we got to go. We're like, all right, we're going to be really late really to get late. into the seats in time. So now, so we just we found this little no, no, side park. I, I don't know right? if you recall. We drove oh, all out the, the way back. Yeah, I, I said, you know what? Yeah, we went back to the arena. I said, get out of the car. <laughs> just go get our tickets so that at least when I get out of the car, I can run up to you and get inside and get in our seat. But I'm thinking I'm getting out of the car to run up to the will call line to right. where they're going to have our tickets ready. The little middle of the envelope with our names on it, right? Just yeah. like all the other VIP people. Well, what do you see? I see a, this massive line, which there always is at all the box offices, but usually there's a second little line off to the side. Well, is there, where, where's the VIP line? Oh, that's right. There was no oh, VIP where, line. Where, where was the will call line? <laughs> there was no will call oh, line. Oh, so in other words, you had to stand with all the people who were just there to buy tickets. Well, I did, which, yes. That, ah. was, that was that was not so much that it's like the problem, like, hey, I don't belong right. on this line. Well, no, but unlike the email, really late. the email so says late, right. that there's going to be, what is, how unprofessional are you? <laughs> Turn off that phone with all your text messages, it's Mr. Popularity. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. I think you did the same thing last time. I did. You left That's why you're getting right? berated. Right. Usually, I'm I'm ragging on you for that, right? I know. You know I what? You know what? Let me put I, my let me put my phone on silent. Yeah. How right about now. you do that right now? 
oh, it would have been great if your phone just went off. I know. Like, you uh, bitch. <laughs> no, but so the I, email so, said. So I'm standing on this ridiculous line. There must be 100 people, and there's like one window open. There's yeah. like eight box offices with the windows, you know, and there's like one girl back there, and she's super slow, and the line is moving like at a caterpillar yeah. pace. So I, meanwhile, should mention that I have Kilo with us, right? Now, previously, um, when we have gone to these things, once you have that VIP thing on your neck, they're, like, they don't check, you go right in. Yeah, you know, but like, we've also never taken Kilo into an arena before. We usually No, I left him, him in the hotel the, room. Up in the hotel yeah, room. But there was no hotel, it's right. just the arena. So I've got Kilo, but now while we're standing on this goddamn line, which is like a mile long, I'm seeing that they're putting everybody's bags on the table and patting down people with their arms extended out. And I'm right. thinking, okay, Going really? through the ladies' bags. Yeah, right? because it's a college campus and your kids can be stupid. So I understand that part of it, but I'm thinking, oh, no, what am I going to do with Kilo? Oh, I'm thinking, oh, no, what are we going to do with Kilo? Because I know you're not going to leave him in the car. No, I will not leave so him in the car. So I can see this whole night no. unfolding, the whole right. night changing yeah. very quickly. Very quickly. Because so. I know when we get up to that security line, they're going to find it. Now... Granted, he's only like, you know, the size of maybe a, a small soccer ball or less. No, not, not even, even, right? No, no, right? no. He's, he's like only three four, pounds, right? Three and a half pounds. He's yeah, tiny, he's very small. Tiny, tiny, tiny. You could pretty much hold him in two hands. Everybody like, knows Kilo if they watch the show. He's been on it. Right. He's um, tiny. You could almost, yeah. I mean, you could stuff him in your jacket. Yeah. And nobody would even know he was in but there. But how would I put extend my arms out to get the pat down and right. all that? So, so I took off my jacket <laughs> and I rolled him in the jacket as if he was like, like my jacket being the tortilla and he being the meat so i'm holding on to it's a dog tortilla i'm holding on to my kilo tortilla um in in my arms and it looks like i just got like a really bunchy jacket and he was really good he didn't complain at all um i was shocked and i felt bad all at the same time so we're waiting on this line waiting 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 and nothing was happening it was moving really slow so now i call to add the phone number that Spike gave us, if you have any problems. So I call and I'm like, look, we're outside. We can't be in there. You know, is there anything, like any way we can get these tickets sooner? She's like, I'm going to try to get these tickets to you. You know, just wait out there. So we we're waiting on the line. So I go up to the guy, the security guy by the door who's standing around looking like he's, you know, doing nothing. So he must be important. And I went up to him and I said, look, I said, where was Spike? You know, they asked us to be in our seats for 530. And, you know, is, is there like a separate window, like a VIP window? Because we got special you know, tickets. And I, nope. I'm like standing there like, you know, like we were expecting somebody to like help you out and say something extra. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, there was like a moment of silence, uncomfortable silence. Like, um, is there anything that we can do to, to hurry this process along, you know, because, you know, we were supposed to, we're supposed to be in there already <laughs> right now. It's because once the TVs get rolling, we're supposed to be on the TV yeah. and it's going to start in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> looking over at you. Now, I know you. I know just the expressions on your face, and, and you're getting annoyed, and I can see it. And meanwhile, you got the dog wrapped up yeah. in the jacket. You yeah. walk over to the guy. I'm still standing on the line thinking we're never going to make it in time. And even if we do get these passes and we get up to security, mm -hmm. you're not getting in right. with the dog, right? And then I see you talking to the guy. I can't hear the conversation. I just see him standing there with his arms folded, yeah. and his head just keeps shaking from side to side like, yeah. nope. Yeah, so I'm like, this guy was completely... Like, no emotion, like, right. no sympathy, no, like, not trying to help or anything. Right. It was like, well, what do you think the, I'm trying yeah. to do with by this the way, shithole? By the way, we, we don't ever play the celebrity uh, card, right? No. We're, it wasn't about that. It's just we, we needed to they be They asked there. us, you know, in exchange right. for them giving us these tickets yeah. so and I this special see privilege. I really frustrated. I'm like, oh, man, this is Yeah, it's, it's like the least we could do well. is be on time. And we were there on time, if not for their shitty... Lack of designated parking. Well, listen, it, it, was, it was not... No the, signage. Usually these things were really big venues, big Vegas hotels, Atlantic City Well, this hotels, was not that, and casino, it was very disorganized. Giant arenas with very high-end type of setups. You know, this was more like a college campus uh, arena. It was a big place, but it was not set up, I think, for, no. this, for a live television broadcast type of No, deal, it was just you know? very unprofessional. So the security was like, you know, they're pretty much... They're, they're used to having like a college basketball game, not like a live television broadcast. Right. So there was no special treatment for the people that came along with that television. Right. Ensemble, right. I mean, it's like, right? dude, like, you know, it's like right. Spike is putting on this big show here that's bringing in the money to this arena. Like, don't, it's like he had no right. concern whatsoever, like, to help anybody out. So that aside, now I see somebody coming out of the doors behind this guy who I know I recognize. And now one you're getting closer the to the folks, window. Yeah. So it's, it's a Spike guy. 
So I'm like, hey, I knew that was you. Hey, how you doing? We saw him at the other fights that we've been to. I don't remember what it was that he did specifically to you. Yeah, well, they, they sent There's the so message many. out to somebody to go up to the, the box office. And they, they, oh, yeah, they, heard, he, they heard we were waiting yeah. on the line. And we need to get inside, go and try to grab them. Yeah, so but he... you were really clever, though, because mm, I didn't even think of this. Yeah. So they got, like, the metal barricade, you know, like, the, like it's like a pipe, like a steel. Yeah, so he's fence. on the in of the inside of the rope, he's so we're on the, side, on the outside he's of the rope. He's on the ropes. side we want to get into. Yeah, it, yeah. Right. I mean, like, we're standing face to face, but he's right. on the other side but of the that, rope. That barricade was only, like, maybe shoulder high, so you could reach over it. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm like, there's no other window. Like, we're trying to wait for these tickets. He's like, oh, I know. You know, she told me. She's she's back there looking for your tickets right, right now. I'm like, right. meanwhile, Skip's already, like, two people away from the window yeah. at this point. And then point. I see you lean in and, like, kind of whisper something in the guy's yeah. ear, and I'm like, oh, oops. okay. I said to What's him, happening? I was like, listen. Would you mind holding my jacket? And he's like, yeah. And I hand it to him, and he felt something. I go, am I Chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then his eyes, like, open wide, like... Right. This is okay. only this is only maybe three or four feet away from the whole security yeah. setup, right? So it's like you said it real quiet. And yeah. You hand the jacket carefully over the fence to the guy, right, right. rolled up denim jacket, yeah. right? And he puts it under his arm, and he walks away. And I was like... No, no, she didn't, man. Are you serious? Because I, I couldn't even believe you gave yeah. Kilo for anybody else to hold because you yeah. never leave oh, yeah. your side, yeah. right? So the guy disappears into the crowd and goes back into the arena. She walks back to me with this look on her face. She's like, I think I figured out a way to get yeah. the dog in. I'm like, you got to be <laughs> kidding me, man. So, yeah, we walk up to the, the box office. They, they have they were stuff walking. There. They were like, they couldn't, they could not have worked slower unfortunately well, like a, yeah. they were just like, like said, they, they weren't, weren't in a rush. set up they weren't set up to really handle that will call thing Not so they all. the same person that was selling the tickets to the regular admission crowd how to go look for how them. to go look right. through this big box i, I looked over her shoulder it was a big cardboard box that was full of okay. you know manila envelopes and everything so so anyway, we ultimately yeah. got our tickets and got inside and i got my dog back and it was really awesome and that was wonderful but it was like torture getting into this place but once we got in. Yeah, we had a great time. We had great seats, front row, right up against the cage. Yeah. Um, I mean, you couldn't and it was ask, awesome. you couldn't ask for any better seats. And along the way, we got to meet some really, really great people. We're back in the VIP area. We took a bunch of cool pictures. Oh, with, yeah, we with, got uh, Tommy so many. Lasorda. Tommy Lasorda right? was there. He was, oh, my God. And he was, I mean, there's like a legend, yeah. you know? Legend. Legendary that was coach, really coach cool. of the uh, LA Dodgers, of course. Tito and um, Amber were sitting in the, they had the same seats as us, but on the other side of the cage. So they right. were also cage side, but uh, right up front. And we, I could see, like, you know, through the cage. Yeah. I could see them both. Bunch of other uh, great uh, MMA <laughs> late legend fighters there. We took some pictures with uh, Frank Shamrock. And um, Ken Shamrock. Yeah, he was so nice. Yeah, they were all. Oh, everybody was, was really so nice. nice, and a lot, everybody was like, "Oh man, we love your show. You yeah, know, we watch your show all the time." Awesome. And I'm like, yeah, "I love watching you fight." You know. Yeah. And then at some point, um, in between fights, I wanted to get us something to eat because we were starving. Oh, we God, haven't. We didn't yeah. eat for so long. So I was trying to walk through the um, the cage area. You know, it's like that part is like roped off as well with right. a security at each corner. So I'm trying to walk through there to get to the exit to go get the food in the main lobby. And as I'm doing so, I find like an empty row of seats. So I walk across and I, and I said to one guy, like, oh, excuse me, to walk past me. Next thing I know, I saw in front of me this burst of fluids <laughs> that like, they were flying and land all over this guy's wow. jeans. And I realized that there was a beer on the floor in front of the seat next to him that I kicked. Yeah. But I didn't just kick it. I, like, kind of punted it. Yeah, you, you <laughs> blasted it through the uprights as if it was a football. Yeah, and the guy got, like, soaked. and shit was all over his jeans. Yeah, I, did, I saw, I was watching you walk through the crowd, and I saw a couple of guys jump up as you came, and then you were talking to them. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is happening over there? So I said and then you to, kept going. Yeah. I didn't even realize what happened. I said to the guy, I'm like... Um, I'm on my way to go get some food and drink right now, so I'm going to go replace that. I, I swear to God, I'm going to go replace that. I'm going to be right back. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And he's like, okay. you know, So I go back up to, you know, and I wait on this long ass line yeah. to get this food. I ordered a beer. They're like, what kind? I'm like, I don't know. Like, just whatever's good. And they're like, well, you know, like there's like a bunch of variety. Yeah, I don't right. know. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Really? Like, this I is the only sports arena that has like a full like, line of every micro brew. And they every- had a nice selection, but <laughs> I don't know what the guy was drinking. 
on tap. You're yeah, like, I was just like, he, he's going to get whatever beer right. that you give me right well, now. Well, That's, the so. point is not even the beer. The point is whose beer it was. Yeah, that was the because fun part. here's the best part of this whole story. I went up there to see like where, where you were and like, you're okay. Because it was a long and, line. Yeah, and you told me what happened. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Because yeah. I, I saw you on the other side of the arena and like a whole commotion and whatever. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. So, all right. So, give me it. So, you got the tray of food. You got the beer in there. Four so chicken ca- sandwiches. I'm carrying it down the stairs. And we're walking to the area back where I kicked the, the kicked incident yeah. happened. So I said, right? over there to the left. I said, you see that guy sitting there by himself? Oh, right over there, right over there. Is that, <laughs> that's the guy. Give the beer to the guy. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh, no. No, no, you didn't kick his beer over. And you're like, yeah, what? I'm like, really? That's Joe Warren. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> that's like one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Lightweight superstar Joe Warren. I'm like, that's. Are you kidding me? That's great. Yeah. But we got to meet him. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. It was funny. He was like, oh dude, what's up, man? He's like, oh, I know you from your show and Spike. And he's like, oh man. He's like, oh my god, that's your wife that kicked over my beer. I'm like, yeah, man. I'm so sorry. So he handed. I felt out. so good though that I. Yeah. He was like, oh, it. no worries. Man. I didn't even think you were going to come back with another one. I'm like, oh, here you go. So yeah, we got into a cool conversation. Yeah. That was just kind of a, a fun way to meet him. And what a what a nice guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was really. Nice. Everybody was so nice. Right I mean, after that, we, uh, we, we uh, turned around, and right behind him was Ken Shamrock, uh, big Ken, uh, Ken Shamrock. Yeah, he was kind of uh, stoic, right? Like, his brother was... Yeah, two um, totally, two, two totally different. Yeah, oh, Frank and Ken, two, and I totally yeah, they different. don't, they don't get along too well. Really? Yeah, no, no, oh, I didn't know that part yeah, of it. Not, and not they were, yeah, because they, you, I never saw them together yeah, at all. And night. don't ever confuse the two of them because <laughs> some oh. people call one the other, and not a good thing to do. Oh. But uh, yeah, Ken Shamrock right now, he looks like an amazing shape. Oh my god! And he's, um, he, I don't know exactly how old he is, but I heard someone told me that uh, that he was like upper forty, like pushing fifty. And he is about to step into the ring in June with Kimbo Slice. Oh my God! Who we met at the Slice yeah, yeah, promotional that's shoot. Right. Yeah, we met Kimbo. And um, he, he just—I mean, even the faces he makes—he's like he is a Kimbo, scary looking Kimbo motherfucker. Kimbo's a right? character. Yeah, right? he is. He's a big character. He's got a full grill in, right? And he yeah, smiles and yeah. he's like, ah. And yeah, he like growls. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so I said, hey man, Ken, you getting ready for the fight? He's like, yeah, I'm ready. He dude. looked he's like he, like he was like solid, right? Yeah, he he's was ripped. Amazing he looks like he's chiseled out of a block of granite. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he looked like he was in amazing shape. And he was friendly, and, but not like overtly friendly. He was like like kind of like all business. Over, yeah, right? he, he was in his head, I think, a little bit. Yeah, right? he, he's he's in the he was in fight fight mode. He's in something. fight zone. I don't you know, know. What I'm saying? Maybe he just got bombarded. We're Kane's side of the fight. Yeah, probably. You know? I don't know. He but, was, because um, he wasn't, his brother was just like, he, like as if he was equally as happy to meet us as we were him. Right. Whereas... Um, Ken was like... Oh, he was cool. Um, he was like, hey, man, absolutely. He was like, yeah, like meeting like, yeah, like more fans. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of a line for people to, yeah. uh, to meet some of these guys sometimes, you know, so... Yeah. Um, who else we run into? I ran into, um... Big John McCarthy, oh, yeah. world famous really referee cool. yeah. of uh, all uh, legendary yeah, MMA got a fights with him. galore. Yeah, got a nice picture of you. Uh, who else do we? I have think that was it that night. But yeah, I think what was the most just a bunch of cool people. Were what was really cool about that was because Tito and his girl were there, and Tito has his line of clothing and and other um, products, the punishment line. Yeah. So they set up like shop at the at the lobbies of these events where they sell their merchandise. And so after the fights were over, he went out to his area and he was greeting fans and signing autographs and right. taking pictures. So he had like the whole punishment athletics booth set up where yeah. they sell all his merchandise and all the uh, shirts and fight gear and all that and stuff. And they were like and nice things. They weren't... Really nice. He has an awesome line of merchandise. In fact, we got a bunch of things, yeah. t-shirts and Although I did try to tell you on the phone that night when we first met him, the night before we met him, I don't know if he was awake or drunk or what, but it was in the middle of the night this tweet came through to me. And it said that I can pick out something like, get grab a shirt, like a punishment shirt your choice right it's yours right, right? which i interpreted as come pick out a shirt right. um, you can have a shirt right, right? so yeah we weren't even i mean we were i never got the shirt out. right so, so now you'll get the shirt so now i'm like eyeballing a shirt <laughs> thinking how do i tell him remember you told me i can have a shirt please that guy, <laughs> that guy tweets with about a million <laughs> people know. a day i know i know like, i know i know like i wanted a shirt remember promising you a shirt yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was eyeballing the shirts, um, but you know I didn't want to ask for it because I felt like a dick. 
So well, I was, as it turns out, I got you one anyway. So well, I'll get, I'll get, oh, you just blew your wad because we were going to talk about how. Uh, well, well, not my whole wad. Just a piece of the wad. <laughs> it's a, it's so a piece, piece of wad. Just kind of, I know, I know. Like I'm gonna spit a little <laughs> piece of wad out, but we'll, you're going to we'll, hold on to the we'll, rest. We'll talk about your yeah. shirt uh, in a second. Okay. But the cool part of that night that. Uh, with that whole thing, with the punishment thing, is that Tito is there and he's signing autographs and the line as the arena now is letting out after the fights are over, there are hundreds of people online yeah. waiting to meet Tito Ortiz, get an autograph and a picture with him and get some uh, punishment athletics merchandise. The line was really long and he. the, the bottom line is, is he's super friendly. He stayed for everybody, he's, he's every awesome. picture, every autograph. He's so awesome. Yeah, man. so no matter how long it took, yeah, he did. He it. actually waited till the last person. Yeah. And in fact, the last people online were the cops. Yeah. The staff, yeah, that right? was that was funny. And you can see they were, yeah. and they're probably, these guys are on overtime now. The yeah, they were all pissy over. until they yeah. got up to This was to like an hour him. after the fight is over. Yeah. The line is still in the arena. Well, they had to be there still, so, right. they, you know, but they looked happy by the end when they got to meet him too. Yeah. So then uh, he, Tito and um, Amber were going to Dave and Buster's, who was, I think they're also he just did a commercial for them yeah. and um, they were going to go there to eat afterwards so they invited us to go with them and um, that, was cool. that was super cool. Yeah, we were yeah. we were like we of course you know like because we already met them and we hung out with them and we really liked them and so we don't like to, we're not, you know we don't like to impose on people you know we don't want to be those people like where you take the risk and ask somebody and then they say no and you feel like a dick. Right. So we were just kind of like hanging out Hate with them. Like a dick. I hate feeling like a dick, you know, so I don't like to ask anything. So, but they ultimately asked us to join them for dinner and I was super stoked and so were you. And yeah, that was cool. yeah we, we drove to the restaurant, got a little lost, um, before we had, there, but we had, we, we had a really fun uh, conversation, just a good time with them at Dave and Buster's. And yeah, the food was so good. Had we had a great burgers, time. Right? We had like some cheap meals going on. Enjoyed their company, something big, and you know, it's like we got to know them even better. Like, because it was just really nice table conversation, and I, I just, I like them so much even more. Just you know, getting to know them on a personal level. So I was very really real excited people. About I mean, we it. meet a yeah. lot of people in this crazy show business lifestyle, and you know, and all. For the most part, really cool people, but yeah. you know, like they're very real, like really yeah, down to yeah, earth people. Yeah, they're people that you would want to know, gotten, even if they weren't famous. Yeah, they, they don't, they haven't been affected so much. It doesn't seem, you know, by yeah. all the celebrity and the fame. Let's face it, he's you know a many times world over uh, world champion fighter. Yeah, you know, so yeah, and he's been there, done that, everything. But what I really liked was that it was a nice opportunity for us to meet people to hang out with people who are really nice whose company we enjoyed and because then it's like you know to get yeah but he's just like a regular dude that's my whole level, point you know yeah. he's like he, this guy's you know fought around the world and won and you know he's more championship titles and you could you know but he's so even, not even, affected and he, and he just seems right? like just a regular he's just regular. a really nice guy yeah and the two of them together are such a perfect match I know, I love you know them they together. just seem really happy together they yeah. remind me and a he, lot of us yeah yeah because he well while he's talking he's a, he's attributing his happiness and and how his life is together Together, all to her, and he just can't, like he wasn't too big of a, right. a tough guy to you know like to credit her for having a lot to do with his happiness. And yeah. that, you know, and, and I love that he shares. We love that. that. He seems like you know he's just very open about you know the fact that uh, she's the best thing that's come yeah. along in his life in a very long time. So. Yeah. So that was um, really really nice. Yeah, and, that, that was a good time. And so then um, I'm trying. I'm just. I don't want to drag on any story, but, um, but what was really cool is that he invited you because you wanted to tr see his gym. Yeah, so, you know, we got to talk in wrestling and MMA and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I said, man, it would be really great to come down and check out your training uh, facility, Punishment, uh, down in Huntington Beach. And he's like, dude, he's like, come on down anytime you want. He's yeah. like, you know, how about you know, come down, like on, he told me today. And uh, he said, come on down and, you know, we'll, we'll get in the cage and we'll, uh, you know, we'll roll a little bit. And I'm like, Really? I know Skip's face looked like somebody just said to him, Santa, just drop your presents down the chimney. That's what his face like lit up like. Well, listen, man. Really? I mean, you know, just, just to be able to stand in the, in a ring with this guy, you know, let alone that I really like him. I, I like yeah. his character. I like who he is. But, you know, he is, you know, legendary in the world of MMA. So, yeah. like, you know, to be able to be at his place you know, kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, an intimate setting. It wasn't like, you know, it was going to like a class that he was teaching. It was just the two of us. And it was really, really well, cool. Um, what are you talking about? When you already went? Did you just jump ahead that far? Well, no, I'm going to talk you about it. You just did. I'm going to talk about it right now. Well, you just jumped ahead. No, I'm going to you talk. Totally what, you totally, you, you, you head jumped. I head jumped. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what, well, is no, that? Because, what is that? I jumped ahead. It's just a reverse. I just said right. reverse. So anyway. So you went, but well, what I wanted to say was you got really excited I was, to go. I was. And so you planned your whole day around this, like, I'm going to be done filming at this time, and then I have this much time that I, I can drive over there so I can beat the traffic. I'll get there. I'll find something to eat. I'm going to eat something, and right. then I'll be there. I'm a trying early. to work in a uh, an MMA session to go and train and roll and spar with Tito Ortiz as I'm filming Catch a Contractor right. and trying to get down there with traffic and everything And you else. also, you, I think then you, you were going to go to the gym and work out, but you, you did not go to the gym so that you can go to his gym and, and yes. see him over there. So, yeah. so we're on the phone and you got all the way down there well, to Huntington we, Beach. We filmed that day. So, yeah. Yeah, so we filmed, and we filmed kind of far away from where his was, place we, is. We were we in Cucamonga. Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a good hour or more that drive. Really, yeah, and that, so that's far. without the crazy L.A. traffic. Yeah. So we're far, and uh, I'm like, all right, so as soon as we, really? <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Oh my god! How does that come out of you? It was so little. Like you didn't. If you didn't even acknowledge it, nobody would have noticed. Yeah, I think they would have. This is a really good microphone. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So we <laughs> finished filming. It's a great day on the set. Catch a contractor. We're, we're going through a whole deal, and I'm like, "All right, guys, gotta go. Let me jump in my car." I already had my bag packed. You know, yeah. I packed up my double and you bag were with all, all my fight you gear and all my, you know, my uh, everything that I need, and um, I had it in the car. And I blow out a Dodge as soon as we get done filming. And I get on the road. I'm like, let me let me get ahead of traffic. Yeah. And I'm excited because we actually got done filming a little bit early that day. Yeah. And uh, so what was, happened when you got all the way down there? Well, I drove all the way down there. I beat the traffic, but I got there like an hour early. Mm -hmm. And I texted Tito as I'm you know arriving in that neighborhood. And I'm like, hey man, just want to let you know I'm, I'm here a little early. I wanted to get ahead of traffic, and I got I got done early, so I just want to let you know I'm, I'm in town. You know, if you want to grab a bite to eat or something or whatever before. And then he texts me back. He's like, oh, man. He's like, dude, I'm really sorry. I should have texted you. You know what? I think I forgot. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to make it down there today. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, beer. With that puff of smoke <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> it was like a crash and burn. Yeah. So I'm sitting in my car and I texted him and I'm waiting for the text to come back. You know? <laughs> and the text finally comes back. And I'm like, oh, what? What? Oh. Uh, yeah, and so now, now at that now, point though it's yeah, rush hour. Yeah, now. now it is like in the midst of rush hour. Now I got to turn around and drive all the way the fuck back to like, our apartment. Like, now it's like a two hour drive in yeah. like ten mile an hour traffic. Right, yeah. it's like a, like a parking lot on the four hundred five uh, all the way up back sad. north to where we I live. I felt really bad for you because you were so uh, excited. You know, I I didn't I didn't feel so bad because the second part of his uh, message was, hey man, you know. Come tomorrow at five o'clock and we'll do it. You know, okay. so I was like, "All right, at least I know I'm coming back tomorrow." Yeah. Now the next day, I had off. We weren't filming the following day. We had one day off, which is pretty rare. We get a day off and catch a contractor. Right. You know, we film like just about every day. Um, so I had actually scheduled way in advance a training session to weight lift at Gold's Venice Beach with a new trainer that I'm really excited about working with, Pedro Barone. He's an IFBB. Uh, pro bodybuilder and I've been looking forward to working with him for a long time so I'm like alright this is going to be an interesting day because I'm going to get in the gym and lift heavy with him all day or you know whatever a couple of hours and then I'm going to get in the car and drive down and probably get my ass kicked yeah. <laughs> in the ring with Tito Ortiz and I'm going to be so sore from lifting weights in the afternoon yeah. so the day before would have been great and at this know? point we should also mention I was in New York because I had to fly back um, the weekend before, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the week. Because now it's a Wednesday, right? You're, right? Now you're going to see him on a Wednesday. So I was home um, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever. And so I'm not there. I was just on the phone with you. Because I wanted to go with you so bad so I can record the whole thing. Yeah, just the, take some pictures Yeah, and stuff, you know, that right? would have been really exciting. I got some good shots. Though. You got some good shots, but not I still the haven't even posted them on Instagram. In so the like, I just haven't had time. You know what would be really I have, I like, a, hundreds of pictures that I haven't been able to get on to post yet. I, just I had just had a vision of you two rolling around on the mat wrestling and you taking a selfie at that moment. How a fucking, selfie? A selfie of you guys while you're rolling. The, you're not bringing the cell phone into the cage, trust me. No, that's right, that's what would be so funny about it. That would oh be the God. best shots ever because I wasn't there to take pictures of you, so right. you should have taken the phone and taken selfies while you're like in a headlock or doing something Oh, yeah, him. that's what I'm going to do. Do you have any idea what it's like if you get in the ring no. with him and getting the life squeezed out of you? I got choked you out like him, hold, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> you can tell him, I got the phone, let me just take a picture. No, I don't have the phone with me. You don't bring any, you don't, you don't have anything like that in your pocket. There's no, you don't have anything in there. We would have to set it up and do 
that. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a great idea in theory. It would but make for great pictures. Think about would, what the picture would look like in your mind, like of you very, being like in the middle really of the It would be a really cool move. picture, but trust me, when I got on the ring with him and, and the bell rang, the only thing I was thinking of was, you know, just trying to hang on for life and not take a picture. So we did take pictures before we got in, and we took pictures after we got out of the cage. Right. And um, fortunately enough, the after pictures didn't look that bad. I thought yeah. I'd be like busted up, and it really. Yeah. I said, "Listen, man, just do me a favor. Just like go go easy on the let face. Let me fix know? my hair. Yeah, <laughs> let me fix now. <laughs> I don't care about fixing my hair. I'm just worried about going back to the set next day yeah. with a black eye. I'm like, right. yeah. well, we, we didn't um, we didn't full contact spar. We weren't kicking or punching. There was no uh, uh, no striking. Oh. We just wrestled. Right, we just grabbed. I forgot. It so it's just like basically that. wrestling, jujitsu. Oh. Yeah, and it, yeah, I can't get, especially at this point yeah, right yeah. now, I can't get back on you know on camera, lumped up, you know, in the middle yeah. of filming a season. That would I not be good. So we both went in with the understanding: let's let's just wrestle rather than you know full contact. So, and that that's a very huge uh, <laughs> difference. Right. So anyway, great time, awesome. I thank him so much for inviting me down there. It was just an people awesome, are wondering right now how to awesome do experience. Um, I did good. I held my own. You know, listen, I, I've been wrestling, you know, for a, a big part of my life. But let's face it, he is a world champion for a reason. And I had no expectation of getting in the ring and doing anything more than just being able to survive, you know, and not get, you know, choked out so badly that I wasn't able to breathe the following day. But um, You got some moves on him? Uh, yeah, you know, very little. You know, I think I got about, you know, a couple of half a moves. Like, I, I got in, you know, to a couple of, you know, like a... A single leg takedown, or, or what would have what would have been a really nice hip throw, but you know, he, pretty much he countered everything I did because the guy is just a master technician. Was he you impressed know? by anything? He's you so did? technical. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he said that you know I had some really good uh, skills, and that you know, basically my biggest problem was that my conditioning right now, which obviously, if you're not in fight condition, you could be the best wrestler or best fighter on the planet. But if you're not in fight condition, you know, these guys train for months leading up to a fight to get in that conditioning. Your breathing is, is such a big part of what we do. So that was a little tough for me, you know, my conditioning. And we, we fought uh, three-minute rounds. We did five three-minute rounds, which three minutes doesn't sound like a long time. But for anybody that's been on a wrestling match or in a boxing ring. To have ring, gone that long and, and, and stuck it right out there, right alongside him, I think that you deserve yeah, a lot of Yeah, you know, I, I was, I was uh, proud of myself that even getting in there and doing that, um, I because you guys like were really like from the way you described it that you were you held your own like for all those yeah, rounds. Yeah, I mean we went at it hard. You know, okay. it wasn't like he was holding anything back. And in fact, you know, he fully tapped me out a couple of times. I mean, if I hadn't tapped, he would have snapped my arm or snapped my neck. You know, we we were going at it hard. Yeah, um, which is very fucking cool. Yeah, it's really cool just so to be able to do that. For it's, him. it's being able to get in the ring and you know like be you know. In and the, be a challenge in, in the ring with a tiger, man. you know. I mean, the fact is that we're pretty close in weight, so um, you know it's it's a lot of work. When we got we both got out of there, we both got out of there soaking wet, you know. And the one thing he said to me was like, you know, dude, you're really fucking strong. He's like, you know, I, I had a hard time, you know, finishing anything on you because you're so strong. And I was able to fight off a lot of stuff, but it's such a technical sport. People don't realize. You just think you get in there and you're just banging out. It's not that at all, especially when you ground fighting and jujitsu and wrestling is so technical um, it takes years and years of all that technique training so uh, but the one advantage I had you know one thing that saved my life I think, was just the fact that even though I'm not wrestling still every day right now I still lift a lot I weight train and you know for my age I think I'm really strong still and, I, and I'm fairly good shape so I felt like I held my own and the best part is I had a great time and um, you know I thank Tito again for, for bringing yeah. me down there and you're going to go back right Absolutely, yeah. He said come back anytime. So I'm hoping that maybe even next week when we get uh, another day off, I'm going to try to shoot back down there and, and get another beating. You know, I just... <laughs> get my, I want to see. Get my ass hope, kicked again. I hope you could do it on a day when I'm here. Yeah, well, You know, thinking about Tito and um, seeing him on those nights reminded me of the, um, the fact that we're shopping also right now um, on a different note. We're shopping for... Because we're going to be doing... Uh, going to the event... Adam had uh, made that documentary, the Paul Ace Newman yeah. documentary, and it's going to be premiering on um, Thursday the 16th. Yes. And at so, the El Capitan Theater yeah. 
in uh, Hollywood, yeah. and it's just an amazing movie. We actually got a chance to see that movie in his living room right. on his couch when it was still like a rough cut, like last year when yeah. we're out here filming season two. He's like, "Dude, I got to show you this movie I've been working on," and I was so impressed with that. I mean, he put his heart into this thing, and it's, it's a documentary movie that's basically the life of Paul Newman, the of course world famous actor. But a lot of people don't know that he was his passion, his yeah. real interest in life was racing cars. More than acting, more than anything, Paul Newman loved to race cars. And everything he did was really just built about around being able to race cars. Do you remember that night? Because um, we watched it, not in his office, where the, where the movie screen is in there. but or well, I don't remember, was it a TV screen? Movie screen? But we watched, we sat on his couch. In, in his like, living his room. Living yeah. room yeah, yeah, on that gigantic screen. And so um, Natalia and Sonny were sitting to the right of me. Yeah. Remember, I had Kilo on my lap, and they wanted to hold Kilo. And they were holding yeah. him for a while. And then Natalia kept running back and forth and... She was getting like a, I think she was making a bracelet or something for me. She was running around. That I think was that the night that we showed up there with um, presents for them too. I think we got. Yeah, that was when was that I when brought, you brought the tie dye T shirt. No, 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 that, that was part of the Christmas gift. I had gotten the big sixty Crayola sixty four <laughs> color your... chalk oh for Sunny. Oh my god! <laughs> the sidewalk chalk. <laughs> All right, so check this out. Adam and Lynette just move into a new house, right? Last year, beautiful yeah. home, of course, and you know, beautiful driveway, and so. Allison gets the idea. Well, we're going to bring the kids, you know, some gifts, you know, and and I'm thinking, oh, what can Can't we get? What can we get for Sonny? I'm trying to think of something that we can get for Sonny for the boy, and what can we get for his daughter Natalia? So yeah. you're, you know, you're going to get Natalia makeup and nail polish because she's yeah. like a real. Girly, but I'm like, girl, I went to Sephora, girl. like, and I wanted to get her something expensive, right. like real makeup, not like kitty makeup. Yeah. So, so we couldn't figure out what to get for Sonny because he's, you know, he's got like every every sports thing, and you know, and football, and I'm I'm thinking, let's get him a football, but and he's already yeah. got one, right? So. You you come up with this brilliant idea and it didn't occur to me afterwards I'm like that probably wasn't such a good idea we get this giant bucket of Crayola sidewalk chalk that you're yeah. going to give the Sonny to go yeah. out and do drawings and stuff on the driveway on their new property right only their driveway is like this awesome driveway yeah. that you don't like yeah you, you don't yeah. want to be writing anything on this driveway <laughs> That was that was like gift one where he was like, yeah. Aww. I think every gift you've given them, he's like, really? Yeah. He's like, really? A fucking tie dye kit? Yeah, yeah. I was like, Natalia's up at nine thirty at night in the kitchen with well, everything sprawled out. No, she was doing it like in their bedroom where they have white carpeting. No, yeah, but she was, she was also in the kitchen. I think he said he had all she had it all spread out and she wanted to do it. It was like late at night. Didn't he do a whole podcast about that? Yeah, like, well, about... he talked about it on his pod. Yeah, because like, I was getting people <laughs> tweeting me like, ah, he's really pissed. Oh you know? my god, oh, he yeah. went on he went on a rant about the yeah. tie dye t shirt kit that you yeah, got. Yeah, so then her. I proceeded after the in, in subsequent visits to ask Natalia if there was any additional colors that she needed. Oh. God. God, yeah. Um, Cause she loved it. Actually, she made a really. She sent me a picture. Um, she she texted me. This she, she it was very nice what she made with it, and she yeah, really she's enjoyed a it. Sweetheart. Yeah. So these kids happy are about so that. nice. Both of them are just awesome. They're very yeah. polite. They're really really nice kids. Yeah, I just realized I went off topic. How Tito related to the story about Adam well, and we, the red carpet was yeah. because we were going to shop for an outfit to wear to that occasion. We're going to the movie premiere of the Paul Newman movie, right? right. And okay, I so we, and, we need a couple of outfits to wear. It's going right. to be a red carpet thing. We're you know we're going we're going to do some pictures right. and, and, I, and I took inspiration from Tito's style because um, we he, he's been wearing um, we've seen him in like nice dress shirts with uh, vest like a suit but the vest and matching pants just like slacks and um, it looks really sharp on him and he always wears like a nice tie and everything so I'm yeah, thinking he's a, he's a sharp dress guy. very yeah, sharp dress yeah. and so I'm thinking to myself that would actually look really nice on you with the vest because you had worn something we bought at uh, John Barbados last year for the red carpet at Guy's Choice Awards. Yeah. Um, for you, the jacket, but with that hot vest underneath so that when you took off that jacket, it was like, bam! You, like, you were, like your arms were slamming. You had like a big, deep V in that. It was like a really, really funky, stylish, very fucking expensive vest. Yeah, I don't think the vest thing too often, but I really like that outfit that we wore for the Guy's Choice Things. So, yeah, trying to get something cool for this thing. And, you know, it's funny. When you go to these things, it's like you kind of want to wear something different than you did the one before. Because, yeah. you know, the pictures wind up all over yeah. social media. And, you know, you don't... You can't wear the same thing. Yeah, you don't want to be wearing yeah. the same thing, right? So, so the, I yeah. knew that, though, that you looked good in a vest. So, it occurred to me, like, let's get you, a, a, like, a nice shirt and a vest. 
So we started uh, shopping for that, and when well, I have a million suits that I don't ever hardly ever wear because we don't. I don't really dress so much like that. We have a lot of a lot of like nice like dress casual clothes, but yeah. you know, like when you go to something like this, especially going to Adam's thing, this is a big night for him. It's yeah. a big thing. He's been working on this forever. You know, I just want to be respectful. I almost wanted to wear a suit to this, but it's not really my style so much to wear. You know, right. so yeah, so to find and, something and, cool looking in the spirit of you wanting to almost wear a suit for this because you know it's his big night and what's Adam going to wear I said well probably like a suit because when he goes on the like on the tonight or uh, Jimmy Kimmel show like he's 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 wearing the suit you know and so you're like well you know let's I said no you're like I got these nice black slacks you know they go with the suit and I said nah I no I don't think that's going to be good you're like no I tried but, them on but, I, thought, I thought you know but look but these are really the, nice the vest and you're good. shirt nice and I'm like nice no dress pants you're like no really no you look like you look like somebody's <laughs> grandpa in those pleated suit pants no you have a thing against suit pants like you don't like dress, I don't like them pants. I don't like them I don't like them but and listen, you know what you can't wear jeans to every occasion doesn't matter you can wear jeans to every occasion really do you, you think, can do you think it's right to show up to like someone's wedding in a pair of jeans let me explain it to you this way, okay? First of explain all, we're not to going me. to somebody's wedding. This is right, but I'm, show I'm using, business. I'm using that as an example. And you're trying to establish, like, you know, your who you are and your personality and your style. And grandpa pants isn't it, well, okay? Uh, so dress, even though you dress, thought... Those little stuff, they're not they grandpa are grandpa pants. pants. They are. They're, Look at grandpa's asses in those pants. They were pants. very expensive. There is no hot they ass. They were well-fitted. They're, they're tailored. Z- 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 <laughs> they're tailored. Zip it. Zip it. Tailored. Stop it. Stop it. But because this is what you did that night yeah. getting dressed because you had to keep trying to convince me in other words, in other ways, why those pants right. looked great on you and I should change my mind and they go with the vest and the shirt. Right, well, let's get let's get to the point. The end of the story is you I took, took my your good suggestion. Advice. I took the pants off. You took Grandpa's pants off and then you put <laughs> on your sexy, pants. sexy I, jeans. I put on a pair of Joe's jeans. R- really nice jeans that are like fitted and they're, they're nice, really nice looking jeans. With the same vest, same dress shirt. And it was and you like, like... You were like, oh, wait a minute. Now you're I'm like, talking. look at your ass, baby. Oh, my God. He looked so good. His ass it's was so, magical. It was, so good. It, oh was it was. It was like you... It was like when I lo- when you had the outfit on, I was in the shower and you came into the bathroom. those of you didn't know that I had a magical ass, now you know. Yeah. It's like even like a <laughs> poof of magic comes out like, like fairy dust. Oh, my God. So you he came... Crazy. Crazy, you know he that? came into the bathroom and it was it was magical. It was like as soon as I looked at him, it was like hot guy, boom, hot right. guy. So one thing you know about me is that I always tell you when I think you're right. You did, which which a lot of people have a hard time doing. And I probably at one point in my life did have a hard time. But doing. you don't do that. I don't do that with you. No. I, you know, like when, when you've been through a lot of relationships and like you try to remember what you did wrong in the one before. Yeah. All right, when yeah. you thought it was a really good relationship and then all of a sudden just fell apart, you're like, what happened? That's one of the things that I did. I wasn't able to admit, you know, when I was wrong. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. I looked in the mirror and I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I look good. They look better. Yeah. You are, you were definitely right. Yeah. And the proof of that is now we're looking back and seeing all the pictures and stuff that were taken, you know, from this thing, getting on the red carpet and doing all that. And you were absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it was right. amazing. You looked so good. Once and again, wifey. Uh, you did good. Thank you, baby. I just do. I, I do want to mention again, and for all the people listening, take a look at those dress slacks on. You know, pretty much every anybody at the next wedding you go to, and you, nobody, you can't really. It's it's got to be an exceptional ass for it to like like for in those those pants. It's just grandpa's pants. Yeah, it, but it, nobody looks good in those pants. All right, listen, listen. It's, that's bad. When I'm sorry. You, when you wear they're a not su- made to look when good. When you wear a suit, the pants are. Made and tailored to match the jacket, right? But so you even, didn't even have on a even jacket. Even though I wasn't wearing a jacket, I know, but your crotch you, hangs you low with those things. You wouldn't wear that suit, that beautiful suit, right? Handmade custom suit. You wouldn't take the pants off and put a pair of jeans your on. Your crotch with hangs low. The, the pockets in the back are like far separated, like on each hip, practically. It's oh not even God. the middle Listen, of your ass. There's no selling you on suit no, pants. No, so I let's hate that. Let's change next topic. But what I wanted to talk about was how that was the was a sting house. Yeah. I just want to mention quickly that this was the same sting house that we actually used to uh, get Sting Manny as well, the first, right. first season yes. one. But what I wanted to mention about the sting house was two things. One was that um, there was a particular crew member, if you recall correctly, who had a bad habit of blowing out the fucking bathroom of these sting houses as oh, soon as we would get there. Oh, my God. That was the one. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah. All right. There was a bathroom in the downstairs, <laughs> like, like not very far from the front door. 
Did and we I, have a nickname for that guy? Like, was it like... No, but I think it was just you and me were like notice. Like, we were talking about it to each other. But he would get to these houses. Like, in the morning, we would start setting shit up. Well, because he, he is part of the crew that gets there very, very early to set up all the cameras and all the lighting and all Not all even the, necessarily, I would say, gear. very, very no, early. On, he gets there. On Sting Day, they're there at like 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, we just, show up at like 6.30. They get there before sun comes up and they're wiring up the whole house. All I'm saying hidden, that happened on that cameras. particular day. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't make a generalized statement because we don't do the same thing for every sting. Well, the bottom line is it doesn't matter what that it was particular why he was day, there. This particular guy has a history. We early. Whenever we see him on the crew and everybody kind of freelances, whenever we see him on the crew, we know that there's going to be a blown out bathroom. By blown out, we means he takes a giant shit and stinks <laughs> up the whole fucking house. It's really bad. It's really and, You know, because bad. everybody rolls onto the set, you know, pretty early in the morning. And we all have to share the bathroom. We're, we're all coffeeed up. And, you know, a lot of times these houses are smaller houses, you know, uh-huh. and they only have one bathroom. And it's like, you go, and, and you know, you need to get you need to get in the bathroom. Been yeah. in the car for like an hour getting to the site. Yeah. And I, all right, make a line right for the bathroom, open up the door, and it's like, like it's whoa. hit in the it's face like with fucking, like a cloud of ass. It's disgusting. Like, really, like dude? He, he takes the stinkiest <laughs> shits. But I'm telling you, it's no coincidence. Every sting, he takes a giant shit while we're all trying to get I ready. he does it. You know what? I just realized, I think he does it on purpose. Why? I don't know. Why would he do that on purpose? I don't know. He never opens a window. Light a, light yeah. a match, dude. Okay. Bring some spray. Use okay. some potpourri like I've spoken about in the past, God. which is another thing I wanted to mention about this thing house. So I bring my supplies with me, and I too had to shit at the sting house. But I use my potpourri, which means there will be no. I didn't even know oh, that you did that. Like, like you're so like pretty. And I know. Like, do you, you actually poop. Only once in a while. Very rarely. Very rarely. I can't imagine anything ugly and stinky coming out of you. Aww, you're sweet. I think the same thing about you. Oh, no. <laughs> but yet. There's, there's I a know. Lo- there's it's a like, lot of really I know. funky looking nut loaf. Yeah, there's a huge type. dichotomy. <laughs> huge dichotomy going on inside this body. It's like one half is beautiful, the other side is Do you dark. Know and, that, and speaking like, of that, like, I always stench. weigh myself in the morning when I get up, right? And like and then I weigh myself after I go to the bathroom and I I, I, like, you, I <laughs> you hear me crack it up with that, right? It's like sometimes it's like three pounds. Like, is yeah. that even possible? Yes. Yeah. Some, well, when I, sometimes when I go to work and then I'll send you a text like, you know, like, I'll bet you I just lost another pound or two, oh you know, like, God, because yeah. you just kind of guess like, ah, it was an inaccurate thing ah. this morning. But yeah, so what I was going to say was this particular house, it was beautiful. It was big. It was like a mansion. And people, I think, were still living in that house. I think they just rented out their house. And I had my poopery up in there, upstairs. It was like a back hidden, like a bedroom bathroom. And I forgot it on the, t- on the tank of the toilet. And then um, they stole it. Like they never oh, returned it to me because no. I had someone from the from from the production company call them that and is ask a valuable them. Valuable commodity for you. She just like goes everywhere with wipes. The cleanest person you ever meet in your life. Yeah, I'm and erotic. All, and also like this a bathroom spray. Yeah, the like, who, who travels around with their own like. I'm person, very neurotic about making sure that, my, that I'm clean spray. down there. So much so that you want to make sure that no the person behind you going in the bathroom doesn't know that you ever took a dump. Right. <laughs> And actually, when the, when they do follow me and I have taken a dump, they they say to me, it smells good in you. What did, did you do? Did you just put some perfume on? Mm-hmm. Oh yep. No God. one ever knows, just like Poo-pourri. the commercial says. Yep. All right. So, dirty, nasty, blow out the bathroom guy. Yeah. That's all there really is. Um, that's that's, that's it? That's all there is to tell. That's all we can talk about. So, with that being said, people, we love you listening to us. Thank you so much. We thank can't you guys. thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make, Make sure you sure. tune into uh, our next episode. We got a bunch of other great stuff coming up. Of course, always fun stuff that's going on. And let's not forget the what the fuck and all the trending and yeah. funny stuff that we do. So please uh, see us on um, social media, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Ask us anything you want to. We will be really happy to address any and all of your questions. Yeah, give and us we the questions. will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you again. See you next time. Good night. Digital.